Hey everybody, this is Dave from AskUncleDave.com. Today we're going to talk about the VLC app for the Apple TV 4. So we'll go ahead and install that, which I have already done, and take a look at the show notes. And what you could do with the VLC app on the Apple TV is you can find all these particular shares uh, in your home network, like your NAS or your MacBook Pro or your Plex server that's running on a PC or something. And you can use SMB, FTP, UPnP, and DLNA uh, to find all these particular movies that you have stored on some sort of hard drive. Uh, now, the VLC app for the Apple TV plays multiple formats like MKVs, AVIs, uh, MP4s, and a whole bunch of things like that. Now, you can also get uh, SRT files from opensubtitles.org uh, right from the app itself. Uh, right on the Apple TV. Now, the VLC app for my MacBook, and maybe even for your MacBook, is probably the best uh, video player that you can get uh, for your Apple TV and your MacBook. So let's open up the app and let's go through it and I'll show you what it's all about. So you have local uh, network up on top there and you can see that it found my NAS, which I have like 16 gigs of, of hard drive space on it and also my Plex server, which is looking at my NAS. So the funny thing is my MacBook Pro doesn't show up, and I know for a fact that I'm sharing it because I'll show you in another app that I definitely have my MacBook sharing. Uh, you could see down here at the bottom, you see MacBook Pro, and there it is. It's showing up as a SMB device. So I don't know why uh, the VLC app doesn't show. I just don't get it. So when you have local, uh, you can go into a NAS, say for instance. Now it remembers your password because I hit save there. And uh, we'll log right into my NAS. And I have a folder on here with all my movies and all my TV shows. So we'll go into a TV show here. And let's scroll down and find something like Homeland. I have multiple seasons. And we'll go to season five. Now notice that there's no metadata right now, uh, until now. Uh, the, the, it shows up on the individual uh, movies itself, but not so much the folders. I think it's very slow when it comes to getting metadata. That's for sure. Uh, unlike other apps where the metadata populates very quickly, um, this one doesn't. So now, regardless of that, we hit uh, one of our shows. Uh, and it'll start playing and you have that gray bar at the bottom there. Let's pause it for a second. And that gray bar is a little of annoying because if you have subtitles, that gray bar doesn't go away quickly like it should. And if there's somebody beta testing this, they should really uh, get into getting that, that uh, gray bar out of the way. Now, you can also get subtitles. So if you uh, swipe down from the top, uh, let me pause the show, hold on a second. And if you swipe down from the top, you can uh, play with your audio, your track, and things like that. And you also can uh, enable subtitles. So if we enable subtitles, we can go to download subtitles. And you can see I have it in Russian here, but there's multiple languages. Let's start from the top so you can see if your language actually is there. So we'll click, we'll, you know, scroll through this. And you could see that it's got multiple languages on subtitles.org uh, that you could choose from. So uh, let's find something a little bit more. Uh, let's do Portuguese. And Portuguese, it found for this particular movie or TV show, it found two subtitles here. So if we click on that and we'll enable it, and then when we go back to play, uh, you'll see that it'll play and this gray bar will go away sooner or later and there it is in Portuguese subtitles. Uh, let's pause that. We'll swipe from the top again and then you have playback speed where you could change the playback speed fast for fast or, or slow uh, and then you got some media information about the title and how long it is and you know what it's all about. So that is local files. Now we'll back through back out of local files and you can use Plex as well. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, but now the interesting part of the VLC app is remote playback. Now there's only one other app uh, in the App Store that I know of that actually allows you to store 
the movie itself, the whole one gigabyte or whatever, right onto your Apple TV. It's definitely the reason why I bought the larger size Apple, uh, larger size storage for the Apple TV, because I knew something like this was going to happen. So with remote playback, you have to enable it. Now, once you enable it, you can go onto your browser or your computer and you can drag and drop, drag and drop uh, movie files right onto the web page, or you can do URLs. And I'm going to show you that. Here's network streams. Now, these are URLs to uh, write directly to that TV show or movie. Uh, and I'm going to show you examples of this in a minute. Uh, and you could do it that way too. So you can have a URL to a, a video and play that. And also you can drag and drop your movies right on to save offline. In case you have an Apple TV in a car or something like that, uh, you can play, you can put a whole bunch of them on there. Once they are all downloaded onto your Apple TV's hard drive, you can play it on offline. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So let's just go through settings real quick. So you have your playback speed, your default playback speed, your network cache level. So uh, I have a fast internet speed and I'll put it on high because I want to be able to retrieve metadata and information fast. Uh, it has metadata, uh, but it is slow. It's supposed to have background uh, cover art, but I haven't seen an example of that yet. Um, you could change your font to the subtitles that you get. And you also have uh, some audio options here. You can have audio play in the background when you're searching another movie while the other one's still playing. And uh, you can have your FTP connections. And these are all the different uh, encoding for your text of your FTP uh, client. Uh, FTP is like when you share uh, from your computer to your, um, to your Apple TV and, and be able to move things along that way. So... Uh, that's pretty much it with the settings and the, the setup here. So now, uh, if you have a network stream, you want to enter a URL, you can use the iPhone app and copy and paste from an email a link. Uh, but the easier way is to go onto the computer. Uh, same thing with the remote playback. You want to be able to drag and drop right into your browser there. So let me go to the Mac now and I'll show you uh, what this is all about. As far as dragging and dropping. So... It, it's not here. I have to refresh it. And then you have to put your IP address that shows up on the app there, uh, on your network stream, on your remote playback right there. You have to put the, either the, the first one or the second one right in here. And you see this dialogue open up in a web page. Um, what you can do now is you can add URLs to videos here, and you can also drag and drop. So let me show you the drag and drop, drop feature first. So say I have a family guy, and I can drop that right in there. And you're going to see it load up and then start to play. Uh, we get this co-ed uh, co -ed, co -ed, co -ed, uh, error message, but I don't know why. Uh, once you hit play, then it'll start playing again. Um, I'm not sure if you're hearing audio right now, uh, but it does play and uh, it works pretty good. And it saves the actual file once it's all downloaded and that white bar is gone. The whole file is there and you could play that offline uh, that's great and it comes with the metadata too so that that's pretty cool um, the other thing is you can uh, play ISO files too so if I threw an ISO in here an ISO file is like taking a whole entire DVD and instead of it being on a DVD it's in a file uh, and basically this is gonna take a long time because it's a pretty big uh, file uh, but while we're waiting for that uh, I'll show you about URL so on my Tableau Oh, there it is. It's starting to play. It plays, it, it buffers a little bit, and then it starts to play. Let's go back to that. So you see here, I'm playing an ISO file for one of my kids' movies. Uh, I have it, and again, we get this co-ed uh, codec message, and I don't know why. I think it has to do with uh, the way the um, the way that it's set up uh, with the audio. Uh, maybe it plays a different type of audio. I don't know. Maybe there's something in settings I got to do. Uh, but so now you see Salty Secret, uh, that's a uh, Thomas and Friends video, and it's still downloading, so I think that's probably why we got the error message. So let's wait for that to download, and let me show you the URLs. Now, I own a Tableau. Tableau is a box that you hook up to your network in your home, and it attaches to an antenna that's up on your roof. And you get a program guide, and you basically can press... Uh, you know, like a channel that you want to watch, and you're watching live. After I noticed that he wasn't... Let me pause that. Live TV, 
uh, right on your in your browser on any of your uh, Tableau where you can do Tableau apps and and browsers. You could see your Tableau. So here's a live stream of uh, I think it's channel CVS or something like that. Now you can download the video, and Tableau uses uh, the M uh, it uses the M3 uh, U8 files. So here's the M3 U8, and uh, it's a file that's very uh, efficient and fast, and uh, you can save a lot of recordings that way. But you can also right mouse button and copy the video address. So I copy the video address and I can take that and I can throw it right into this URL paster right there and hit plus. Now watch the Apple TV. It's going to start to play live TV um, right on the Apple TV, which is pretty amazing. I'm going to come out of it. Um, so you could throw any URL. Now, for instance, I have a website that I belong to. Um, you can click on alphabetical order. This is like a $9 a, a lifetime membership. You pay $9 once. And then you get access to the uh, forum, which is actually has all these links that you can uh, watch different shows. So say we wanted to watch Hannibal. Uh, you could see that Hannibal shows up. These are the seasons, one, two, three. And say we wanted to play this episode. I can click this and play it right there in my browser. Uh, or I can right mouse button on it. It's an MP4. Uh, that's what it's uh, connected to. And you can copy the link. So I go back here and I put in the link and I hit paste. And I hit the plus sign. And now you're going to see it show up right on my Apple TV and play it. Now it could be easier than this. Previously uh, on hand, It's going to play right there on my Apple TV. I could throw multiple files in there. And when I go back, you're going to see... Um, if I go back to network stream, you're going to see the Hannibal link right there. Now, it's great because it saves all the links and it saves all the files that you download. Now, if you wanted to play it again, you just click it and play it. But if you wanted to delete it to clean up a little bit, you just press and hold the menu, the, the select button and you hit delete and it will delete that link. It won't delete it from your computer or anything like that. Don't worry about that stuff. So uh, remote play, there is remote play. You could play Family Guy, we could play that. So anything you throw at the browser on your computer comes right over onto your Apple TV. This is spectacular. Uh, uh, VLC is my favorite app on the Mac. Um, I love it, but I wish my MacBook Pro would show up. Unfortunately, I'm sharing it SMB and I don't know why it's not showing up. Uh, so you, what do we talk about? ISO files. Uh, we talked about local. We talk about remote playback where you can throw files on to save them. Uh, you can do network streams. So any URL uh, based um, file can get, you know, uh, put on there as a link to the URL to the video. And it goes right there. And then in settings, you could change a couple things. You can get the subtitles. Um, you could do all that. And I think it's all good. Uh, let's just try real quick some music. Um, it's the first, one of the first apps I've seen that you can actually put a bunch of music files right in and then they download and they start to play uh, one after another and they actually save uh, the files right to your Apple TV. What you can also do is hit this plus sign here and you can add all the videos that way by, by uh, highlighting them all, hitting choose and they'll throw right into there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this browser uh, to work it for your Apple TV. So anyway, this has been my review of the VLC app. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.